Hello. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? Yo. I want something to drink. I just realized that now. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Come on in. Good evening, everyone. We're going to give it a minute or so. Let's wait for everybody to come on in. Voice. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, family. Hello. Okay, we're going to give everybody just a few minutes just to come in. How are you guys doing? How was your week? Are you good? Are you in good spirits? Um, had a, a rather interesting week. Uh, um, but God has just been good and faithful and kind. God has been faithful and kind. Um, so yeah, we're just grateful. Thank you so much. My voice is doing weird things. <laughs> but you know what we do? We press on even though it's a bit deca deca ring. All right, let's just check. Please go ahead and tag a friend. Let them know we're in. Grab your Bibles. Grab your notebooks. Uh, today, I want to just put a disclaimer out there that it's going to be a taking notes day. I even have two. These are my small traveling ones. Uh, you know? Um, it's going to be that kind of evening. So, please make sure that <laughs> you are ready. You are ready. I put up a, an Insta story saying, if there was ever a Bible study you need to come to, uh, it's this one. I think today is going to be... Uh, quite an exciting one. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the honor tonight, Lord God. We are so grateful for this opportunity. Here we are, another Thursday. We've gathered, Lord God. You've given us an opportunity to be in your presence. We don't take lightly the opportunity for us to gather in this manner, uh, for us to share time and fellowship with one another, uh, for us to spend time with one another, but more importantly, Lord God, to spend time in your word. We just want to glorify you, want to give you all the praise and all the honor. And Father, we just want to pray that as we even approach your word, that we're sensitive to it, Lord God, that we don't just take this as another opportunity or another live or another thing to be a part of. Uh, Father, we're not just building community, but we we want to be conscious of your presence. We, we don't want to be seen as the right circle, yet you are missing in action. And Father, we want to be careful to give it over to you that all 4,000, 5,000 of us here, Lord God, are here specifically for you, Lord God. We don't want to build community and miss communion with you. So we are intentional this evening, Lord God, to say we've brought our Bibles, we've brought our notebooks, we've invited a friend, and here we are, Lord God, intentional about the next hour. We don't want to rush over it. We don't want to make it into a spectacle. Lord God, we refuse for the hype and any other thing to be distracting to what it is we actually came for. And it's to hear what you have to say. Make our ears sensitive to hear what you have to say. Make our hearts be willing to receive exactly what it is you have to say. Thank you for your word, the word which you watch over to perform. Father, I pray, Lord God, that as you watch over us and you watch over your word, that we may hear your word well today. That our ears become fertile, so our hearts become ground, Lord God, for growth and for this word, Lord God, to expand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the great teacher tonight. We pray, Lord God, that whatever we will say with our mouths, whatever we will read with our eyes, Lord God, let it not just be words or exchanging of words, or reading of words, but Father, we pray for divine understanding. We, we pray for divine aptitude tonight. We do pray for divine application of this word. May it resound loud in our spirits. That, Father God, it not just be another live, it not just be another moment to record an Insta story just to take off that you were here. No, Lord God, this is not just another thing. We're not a running club. We're not a, we're not a, uh, that's not what we came for. We, we came specifically for you. So, therefore, the things you take seriously, we take seriously. You take souls seriously, we take them seriously. You take your word seriously, we take it seriously. You take time with you seriously. Therefore, Lord God, we prioritize you, even in this hour. 
Father, I pray against any form of distraction, anything that will want to move our minds away from what it is you want to do in this place. Let nothing take kingship or lordship in this place. Lord God, we declare that not only are you seated on the throne, that this hour belongs to you. Oh, our lives belong to you. Our attention belongs to you. Our concentration belongs to you. And we want to be sensitive to that this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those, Lord God, who are joining us for the first time, Lord God. Pray, Lord God, that they will hear you clearly. Those who haven't been to church in a while. Those who haven't taken time to hear you out in the wild. Those who've moved away from you. Those who are covered in guilt and shame and feel that you no longer love them. Father, we renounce every lie that the devil has spoken over us in the mighty name of Jesus. We come as your children this evening. Children who need their father. Children who need their God. And we pray, Lord God, that as we spend this time, it will be fruitful. That it will be everything that you have called it to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We honor you. We magnify you. Amen. Hello. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is well and in good spirits. Happy Thursday. My name is Rorisang Tandekisa. I have the privilege of being a part of such a beautiful family of God-loving children. And that is Jesus this, Jesus that. And we gather like this every single Thursday between 7 and 8 p.m. for Bible study. We also gather in the morning. Somebody says, hey, I'm not a morning person. Eh, sweetie, when it's time to pray, everybody's a morning person, okay? Uh, we pray in the mornings at, at 6 a.m. until about 7 a.m. Uh, before I have to rush off to work. Uh, we come together in this space. Our heart is very simple. Is that, is that Jesus is necessary for our generation. At the core of it, we believe that he's the answer. You know, somebody says, I'm sick. He's the answer. Somebody says, I need a job. He's the answer. Somebody says, I need peace of mind. He's the answer. Somebody says, I need, you know, to connect with something greater. He's the answer. Somebody says, I need a way forward. We believe that in, in every life situation, however it may display itself, that Jesus Christ is the answer. We also believe that he died and rose again from from the cross or from the grave you know i think oftentimes we're not clear we make it oh no we believe in that we don't believe in the universe we believe in the god who made the universe it's not this ambiguous uh, uh, god no we're very clear jesus christ is lord he is savior he is everything that we believe in we believe that he reconciled us to the father so that's the premise of what we believe in we believe that the church is important yeah. In no way are we a replacement to the church. The Bible says, forsake not the gathering of saints. That the church and community is a big part of you and I living out our Christian faith well. You know, we, we are all looking forward to hearing God say, well done, well, well done, good and faithful servant. So we believe the church is, is an important part. That God takes the church seriously. Therefore, we take the church seriously. So again, if you don't have a church that you're planted in, please go over to our JTJT JT page, Jesus this, Jesus that. Send through an email. Let us help you find a church that you can be planted into. And then one that we believe, we believe in community. So this is why we have this platform once in a while. We pop up in a city around you for us just to fellowship together. But the premise is that this is what we live by, the word of God. This is what we believe in, the word of God. Nothing subtracted, nothing missing, nothing added. We believe in, in, in speaking it as it is and then being obedient to what the word of God says. So uh, sometimes it will be a place that encourages you. Sometimes it will be a place that calls you out uh, because we want to live a true and authentic life with God. So if you are here for the first time, that speech was for you. Everybody else, you guys know the drill. Um, but I'm super excited tonight before... I go to the surprise. I want us to quickly pray for someone. There is 7,000. Oh, you can see. There's 7,560. 7,500 and something. We'll run it off to 7,600. So imagine if we were in an auditorium, how many people would be there? Just, I want you to close your eyes and imagine 7,000 
plus people standing in and around you, right? It's a huge, some people would say it was a successful gathering because we were able to get 7,000 people in one space. So here we are on a random Thursday and there's seven something of us here. I want you to go ahead and tag a friend, find someone, please scroll, there's many of us here. I want you to pray for somebody um, this evening. I just want you to take time to pray for somebody this evening. Um, I'm probably going to take a little bit of your time and maybe add it by five minutes. Have mercy on me tonight because the Lord loves me and you love me. But I want you to, <laughs> to pray for someone this evening. Tag them, tag them. If you don't tag them, it's also fine. You can send them a DM later. The reason why we say tag them because it feels great to know that somebody has you in mind. A stranger somewhere is going, lifting up their voice and lifting up your name before God. So that's important to us because this is what community is, right? Somebody says, oh, Rory, I'm the only one. I don't know anyone here. The fact that you are here, you're part of this family. There you go. There's 8,000 of us here. So find a friend. I've got my friend here. Let's pray. Um, I want you just to speak a word of blessing over them. This time of the year comes with a lot of exhaustion. This time of the year comes out with weariness. This is usually when a lot of people tap out. This is usually when people start to wither away. You know, we're not at church as much as we used to do. We don't serve as much as we used to. We don't put in 100% at work as much as we used to. We don't put in 100% in our marriages, our relationships, in the people around us. It's just a time where we're tired and we just want to pray that father let it be you who renews our strength can you just pray that over someone tonight that father renew our strength renew our strength renew our strength i don't know how else to position it to you just pray that over them that give them strength lord god in their relationships lord god in their schoolwork in their working spaces lord god in their ministries Father God, and they're taking care of themselves. You started off the year great, taking care of your body. Now you're just weary. You no longer want to take that walk or drink water or be healthy. You're weary, you're tired. Father, renew our strength in whatever area of our lives, Lord God. I just want you to pray over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that, Lord God, we get energized by you. Thank you that your presence is exactly what we need, that when we're found in your presence, there's everything pertaining unto life. Mutimwaka, here we are. We've gathered as a multitude. There's over 8,000 of us here, Lord God. We are in different parts of the world. We're different parts of the province. We're different areas and stages of our lives. Lord God, some of us, Lord God, don't know how we're going to finish off this week. Don't know how we're finishing off this year. There's no energy, Lord God, for us to pursue the things that we thought we were going to go for. We've been disappointed too many times. We've been let down too many times. We're just tired, Lord God. I wake up in the morning and I'm tired. There's no zeal. When I'm with the meds, to restore. When I'm with the meds, I'm pilota rona. When I'm with the meds, I'm more energized. Father, we just want to pray this afternoon that Lord God revive us once again in our homes, revive us in our workspaces, revive us in our crafts, revive us in our ministries, revive us. Let there be a sweeping of Your presence, Lord God, that is tangible, that is edifying, that builds us from within. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we're speaking to our friends who've given up tonight we're speaking to our friends who've thrown in the towel and we want to speak directly to their spirit and say spirit man remember who you are remember whose you are you are a child of a king a king who is mindful of you a king who is aware of your shortcomings a king who is aware of your load father we thank you that your yoke is easy and just because your yoke is easy doesn't mean there's no way but father we are thankful that because it's with you lord Lord God, it doesn't feel like the world's weight. Those of us, Lord God, who are feeling heavy burden, those of us, Lord God, who are feeling like we can't move anymore, stagnant, can't make those decisions, can't move forward anymore. Lord God, we just want to speak a revival of energy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give us excitement, a zeal for life, a zeal for your word, a zeal for our prayer life, a zeal for our family, the spaces that you've entrusted in us. Lord God, we pray. That we don't fizzle out, we finish strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that the latter will be greater. Shaya haboso tomakasi tereba. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lebeso toya hamashekiba. Ah, Lord God, in the corners of our rooms, wherever we are, reach us. 
Some of us are emotionally drained. We've got nothing else to give. We don't know how to love on these children anymore. We, we've given it our all. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us. Oh, the things we were passionate about, we're no longer passionate about. Revive us, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to continue to pray for that person even after the life. Send them a message. Send them a scripture. Send them a word. Continue to encourage. Don't grow weary of being an active member of the kingdom of God. This is who we are. This is what we do. So even after the live is on, we don't switch on and off. We, we are constantly in this mode. Any opportunity that God gives us to speak his word, we take it with excitement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right, I'm super excited tonight. Um... I went to church on Sunday, so I stay in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. I bounce between two cities. Um, so my home in Cape Town, uh, from a church perspective, is Faith Point, uh, Cape Town. Um, a dear friend of mine, his name is Pastor Jay, uh, preached such a profound message on Sunday. If, if you go to Faith Point, you will remember that uh, I was on my feet a couple of times during that sermon. And, and it was so reviving. Funny enough, the word is reviving because it, it was a wake-up call. And, and, and I just remember going, yo, I wish I could take this and, and somehow just play it on JTJT because I really feel like it's a word in season. Um, but you know, sometimes we say stuff like that, it's a word in season. It's a word for every day. Because you've got to keep watch every day. And, and I think once he starts to share you, you'll understand why I, you know, twisted his arm. And I was like, yo, please come through and share this word. So we have the privilege tonight of having Pastor Jay um, share the word. It broke me into pieces. I'm still digesting that word. Uh, so if you hear me hollering in the background tonight, please know that it's still a fresh word even to me. Um, but he preached it with such passion and I, and I believe it's a word that we all need to hear. So, um, without any waste of time, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and watch as my voice is gone. So this is the Lord. Say hello. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, um, for having me. Thank you. Again. For again. Yay! Again. So we didn't do too bad last time um, and thank you for all the, the love that I received last time but let us not waste any more time. Um, let us get into the word. Um, uh, this month as a church in, in Cape Town we've been reminding um, ourselves of how important it is to tell people about Jesus. But the truth is many times there are believers who can think the gospel is for the lost, that the gospel is for people who still need to say yes to Jesus. But many times you have to ask yourself, have you yourself received and fully been impacted by the gospel? Oh. We ask ourselves these questions because at times we will be in church gatherings and we will be talking about the fact that God has sent his one and only son. And there will be a believer who will say that this is my truth and this is my foundation. Yet you will hear that the one and only son was sent on your behalf to connect you to God. But there will be no response. There will be no excitement. There will be no revival in the room simply by hearing that God sent his one and only son. Jesus came to fix and to mend a relationship that could not be mended in any other way but by the perfect sacrifice. Yeah. So we ask ourselves, then what's happening with us? What's happening on the inside of us? If the world must receive the gospel, have we truly received it ourselves? So the title of the message is called Sleep Walking. If you're, if you're taking notes, sleep walking. We're sleep. taking notes, not if we take notes. Okay, everyone taking notes. The title of the message is Sleep Walking. So the Bible says once more, uh, Mark, Mark 16 verse 15. Mark 15 verse 16. Mark 15 verse 16 says, He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Now again, this is what the Bible is telling us to do. Go and preach to all creation. But it's important that we do not forget that this message is for us too. The, the gospel is for the church. 
that we do not need to hear an encouraging message. The gospel can encourage. Sure. We don't have to hear a message about provision. The gospel can let us know that we will be provided for. We don't need to hear a message about how our destiny can be reached and how there's a purpose over our lives. The gospel is enough. For us to know that there is purpose purely when we hear this good news, it lets us know that where there was purposelessness, sure. purpose came through Christ giving his life for us. So good. But you must ask yourself, we talk about a walk with God. Yeah. We talk about walking with him. But there is a phenomenon in the human condition called sleepwalking. Yeah. Where um, I wrote the definition. It is the act of getting up and waking and walking around while asleep. So someone can wake up. Someone can walk. But they are still asleep. Mm -hmm. It says that sleepwalking is most common in children who usually outgrow it by their teens. So there's two things. In the human condition... You can find yourself walking, but you are in a dream state. Mm -hmm. now, now, the medical condition says that this can be self-diagnosed. Okay. Meaning you can see yourself walking. You can wake up and realize, hey, Moved. I was in bed. Mm. Now, why am I in the kitchen? Yeah. So you can see that, wait, something is going on. But unfortunately, many times, spiritually, we are unable to see that. Many times spiritually you can be in the house of God. Yes, you walked into a worship gathering, but you are sleeping. Yeah. Yes, you, you have opened, you're on a live right now, but you are sleeping. You, 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 you are in a dream state thinking that the way you're doing your Christianity, the way you're walking with God has impact. We have people who have all types of quotes online, all types of messages online that sound big, that sound full of power. But if we look at the fruit of the life, we don't see the fruit. The fact is we have now turned to make ourselves find new fruits, uh, uh, being nice, uh, uh, being kind. We say that those are your fruits, but being we do not being influential, having hey, followers, but we do not see the fruit of souls turning to Christ. Sure. We do not see people repenting through your life. Sure. Through your life. Sure. The Bible says this, that it's, um, I mean, the, the medical condition is, it is common found in children now hebrews 5 verse 12 to 14 he hebrews 5 verse 12 to 14 before we get into our base passage hebrews 5 verse 12 to 14 it says in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers but you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of god's word all over again so paul is writing to the to to the church and saying that there is something you are supposed to outgrow now, as a Christian, we cannot sit in one state of loving, serving, preaching. There are things that we must outgrow because there are people that must be taught by you. And let me not say us. Mm. You listening to me right now. There are people who by now, they should be learning the things that you have overcome. Yeah. There are people who should, you should be navigating how God has taught you how the spirit of God has guided you through seasons, but you must still be taught the elementary things of the gospel. It says you need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on a milk being still an infant is not acquainted yeah. with the teaching about righteousness, Okay. but solid food is for the mature mm. who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil, And I'll put it to you that many people cannot distinguish the fact that are they awake or are they sleeping? Many people go through God's word and they are unaware that am I in a spiritual sleep? Why do I need the music to play a certain way to be waking up in church? Why do I need the right speaker? Why, why do I need the right atmosphere yeah. in order to have an encounter with him? Could I be sleeping? I want us to look at a character in the bible today called eutychus eutychus can you say eutychus eutychus ah eutychus eutychus and and i was saying on on on, on church that as south africans we have this thing that we love to do we love to give people nicknames mm -hmm. your name can be jeremiah soon you'll be jerry 
Your name can Majirza. be Majirza. <laughs> your, your name can be Kenneth. Soon you'll be Ken. Ma- Makenzo. Makenzo. That's Ken. what they that's what they used to call me in, in high school. Kenzo. Makenzo. Makenzo. So you to kiss. Um we're gonna give him a, a nickname today and we're gonna give him uh the nickname you. Okay? We're gonna call him you. And what that means is we're going to talk about you today. We're not going to call him Eutychus, but we're going to find ourselves in the story today. Sure. Let us read this in Acts chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. One more time. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 to 9. It says, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting, seated in a window. This, what's interesting is that there's a window behind us. So we stick with uh, the Lord is moving in the name of Jesus. <laughs> seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus. Mm. who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Now let us get into this. We see Eutychus and Eutychus is someone who most likely would have been one who is not playing with his salvation. The fact that he finds himself in a place where Paul is preaching until late hours. Church, he was someone who was not playing with his salvation. He, as a matter of fact, um, if I were to preach another sermon, I would say how to place yourself correctly to build your walk with God. Yeah. How to place yourself in the right places to build yourself with God. Now, Eutychus had the three Ps. Eutychus had the three Ps. The Bible tells us that he was in the right place. Can someone say place? Can someone type place? place. He was in the right place. Place. What does the Bible tell us? On the first day of the week, we came together, break bread. Paul is speaking to the people until midnight. He is in a place where he can hear God. He's in a place where he can hear God. He can hear from God. He can, he can grow in his faith. He's in the right place. Number two, he is among the right people. That's the second P. That's the second P. People. He's with the right people, guys. He's not with the bad crowd. He's not with people who are not serious about God. When you are in a group of people who are willing to hear someone preach until midnight, sure. you're with hungry people. Yeah. You're with people who understand the importance of the word of God. So Eutychus was with the right people, not just the people vertically, but even horizontally, yeah. who is the man speaking to him. Paul, he's before Paul. Number three, the third thing to help him grow in his walk with God is Preaching, the preaching you're listening to. Can someone write preaching? Preaching. So, number one, he has the right place. Number two, he has the right people. Number three, he's hearing the right preaching. And I, I, I said on Sunday, he even had the right atmosphere. Oh, I feel like uh, <laughs> atmosphere is an important thing. I was saying that, ah, if, if you want to be romantic, you, you don't put on all the lights in a room. Ah, no. uh, uh, you put on just a few. A, just a few. Uh, you put on a few <laughs> lights and you say, ah, the, 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 the mood is set. The mood is set. Uh, the atmosphere is ready for me to, <laughs> to receive a, 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 a cupcake in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, but, but, but atmosphere is so important. And, and many times people underestimate how powerful atmosphere is. Now we see that Eutychus had the right place. He had the right people. He had the right preaching. He even had the right atmosphere with all the lamps in the room. Ah, when a place is lit up with the lamps, you, you, I don't need to explain much. But the Bible says this. He was sinking into a sleep. Sure. A deep sleep. A deep sleep. Right place. Mm. Right people. Sure. Correct preaching. Mm. Correct atmosphere. Yeah. But he's sleeping. What does the Bible open up to you as a believer? It says you can be in the right atmosphere, but there can be a sinking into a sleep that you're experiencing. So what does it mean? We have to get to a place where we are not blaming our surroundings anymore. 
Because for Eutychus, he had all the right things. Yet he was sleeping. We have to get to a place where we are no longer chasing different men of God. Get to a place where we are chasing different atmospheres, different ministries, getting in and out of churches because this one is not preaching. And the scriptures are showing us that you can have it all together. But the fact is, if you will be awake and revived in your faith, it has to do with you. Yeah. It has, you can't blame the preacher anymore. You can't blame the church anymore. You can't blame the worship leader anymore. It, it has to do with you. If you are in the presence of God and the gospel is preached, you feel nothing. We must look at ourselves. We can't say he's not anointed. We can't say she's not gifted. We have to see what is happening on the inside. Are we sinking in a sleep? Sure. So and good. stop blaming what's around us. You see, we can't afford to sleep. So good. You cannot afford it. Yeah. You can't afford it. Previously, we read that the Bible says, by now you should be teaching. So, by now for me. By now. By now. By now you should be teaching someone. But it says, we must go back to the elementary things. Yeah. The thing is, there's someone who must be learning from you right yeah. now. There's, there's a friend, there's a family member, there is a kid on your street, there's someone who you work with who should be learning, you should be teaching them what the Spirit has taught you, what Scripture has taught you, what God, but, but you, are, you are still somewhere where you need to be woken up. And this is one of the reasons why we can't afford, someone must be learning now. Someone should be overcoming through your life story. Sure. Someone should be getting guidance and, and should be avoiding pitfalls through your guidance. But many of us are sleeping. We are sleeping. You can't afford it. Now, let me say three reasons why you can't afford to sleep. Three reasons. Eutychus is in this atmosphere and he's missing out, missing the fact that there are three reasons why you cannot be sleeping. And I'm praying that you're not listening only with your ears, guys. I hope you're not only listening with your ears, but I pray that you are opening your heart, you are listening with your spirit, that you are hearing you can't afford these things that you're doing. Sure. You can't afford this thing of you, you're not praying enough. You can't afford it. The people around you can't afford. Destinies and lives, families can't afford this thing that you're doing. Yeah. That, 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 that you are not brought to life. Your, 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 your walk with God has come so, so, so much of just a pattern and, and it's mundane. And, and, and yes, people look at you and it, and it looks powerful, but there's no life. Yeah. There's, and, and not just there's no life, but what you're carrying is not life-giving. And when we say life-giving, we look at Christ. Christ gives life to the dead mm. he, he 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 sees what is dead and brings life what we have done in the church is we say we give life to those who have life already we we, we just shine the light where there's already a light but we have to come back to the place where the, jesus says he did not come for those who are well mm. he, came he came for those who are sick yeah so 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 our country our cities, our towns, our townships can't afford our sleeping. Number one, the reason why you can't afford to sleep is because night is coming. Number one, night is coming. Number one, Big facts. night is coming. And I'm not trying to sound negative and bad to us today, um, but night is coming. Acts chapter 20 verse 7 says this, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. Paul knows that there's going to be a shift in the season. He's no longer going to be here. There's not going to be this access to Paul. There's not going to be this access to, to this wisdom, this, this, this season of grace where you can ask these questions is gonna go. This season where there's covering and there's safety with Paul there 
is gonna go but while paul is cognizant to say this season is i'm leaving eutychus is sleeping unaware that what paul is giving he's even extending it so that he so that eutychus can stand in the change of season yeah now for every believer you must know that there are certain things that are a privilege you're holding on to now that are gonna go yeah there are certain relationships that are helping you that that relationship it can go it can be affected mm. there, some of you are studying now and there's time to grow in your faith with god but night is coming where that time is gone yeah sure and if you are sleeping you will not be able to handle the change you will not be able to handle the loss you will not be able to handle and and sometimes it's not only the bad things night is also the good things because sometimes there's a season of extreme growth and if you have been sleeping in the current season you will grab a hold of worldly things and forget your god night is coming so good and now the the thing the interesting thing about Eutychus is time is extended meaning maybe he thought ah, let, let let me move on to the next thing let, let me go home but Paul is saying oh, it, it's not a regular thing clearly Paul is saying let me extend this time it, it's it's seeming like this season that 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 Eutychus is in is is it's taking longer this this mm. season there's a lesson that's taking longer than usual there's a there's a lesson but but because he's sleeping the lesson is going on but he's not receiving in the lesson sure. and and i think there are times when god is trying to teach a lesson and he's keeping you in a time for a while knowing that something is going to switch in your life and you need to hear this but the sad thing is too many times men of god and women of god have sat in a season complaining about the season why is paul taking so long we should be going home by now why is the season taking so long why we I, I, it's boring now i've heard it before hey. not knowing not knowing that things are changing not knowing that night that that night is coming but because you're sleeping once more the season you're in you miss the fact that you're that you're receiving grace by the extension of the season the privilege the privilege the love you're receiving Ooh. that keep learning what 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 god is trying to teach but instead we find that we have complained about the lessons god is giving us we have complained about where he's telling us to stop and to wait and as we complain we don't hear yeah as we as we complain about where things are looking we don't hear then the new season comes we make mistakes and then we find ourselves back to where Paul is saying you should be teaching let us start afresh with you because you could not handle the night John chapter 9 verse 4 says John chapter 9 verse 4 John chapter 9 verse 4 I hope this is blessing all of you wherever you are, are seated standing driving if you're driving hopefully the phone is come on let's be let's be responsible uh John chapter 9 verse 4 it says as long as it is day we must do the works of him who sent me night is coming yeah where no one can work absolutely as long as it is day we must do the works as long as it is as it is day we must be awake we must we must work what god has given us to work yeah, yeah, yeah. because the night it's is coming. coming and you will not be able to do what you're doing now sure you know you know there was a time when i was i was thinking about my life this is a bit aside aside of the, the what i'm sharing but a time i was praying and i was like hey lord this 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 time of my life is taking a while mm. and i just felt this sense that that god was was letting me know that you're going to miss this time sure and and was like the, the thing you're complaining about you you're unaware that you're going to long for it you're going to long for this one day you're going to long for for the time that you're complaining about one day because night is night so number 1 you can't afford to to sleep because for all of us night is coming 
This is for all of us. Number two, you can't afford to sleep because oil is limited. Oil mm. is limited. One more time. Oil is limited. Oil is limited. In Acts 20 verse 8, Acts 20 verse 8, it says, There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Now, if you are any, if you are uh, familiar with the lamps, as the Bible speaks of lamps, lamps are are charged by oil. The oil is what is helping the flame to stay yes, sir. alight. Now, if you are falling asleep while a lamp is on fire, you can find that the oil is reducing. It's reducing. It's going lower. It's going lower. Yet you are asleep. And when you are sleeping, and rather, and, and when you are sleeping, you can come to a place where you are unaware that what is carrying you is not unlimited. I, I say this because there is such a thing as burning out. Sure. There is such a thing as burning out. Remember, I said sleepwalking. Sleepwalking means you are walking. Sleepwalking means you are standing, sure. yet you are asleep. So you are working. The oil is being used. The life is being spent. The strength is being spent. But you are unaware that this thing is limited and it, is fini- and it can finish. We find that there are people who aimlessly are walking into place to place. There are people who are aimlessly walking into event to event, ministry to ministry, uh, hang out to hang out, conversation to conversation. I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that all over the place, as busy as can be. Yet they are asleep and unaware that you can burn out doing life that way. You can burn out doing life that way, where you get to a point where, yes, There are many lamps around you. Now, the scary thing is when there's many lamps around you, you don't know how bright yours is burning. Yay! Yes. Because there's light all around you, you are unaware of how bright is mine. Where is my lamp? Where is my fire? Where is my... I'm around people who are who are on a fire where, where there's light is burning, but where is mine? And because you are sleeping, you never check to see that I'm losing. I, if I keep doing things this way, I will not be able to stand when the bridegroom comes, which the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 to 3 speaks of the 10 virgins, which is Matthew 25 verse 1 to 3. It says, and at At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. You see, how we handle our oil is important. Sure, God help us. How we handle our capacity is important. Because there is a time the bridegroom comes that when he arrived, they they had nothing. It was, they had nothing. It it was empty at that point. While the Bible tells us the others were saving, were were wise about how they were handling their capacity, their grace. They they, They were knowing that they have to, they have to, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And, and, and unfortunately, I mean, it's a, it's a thing that tends to happen these days. Sometimes even in the faith, it seems like some people want to compete with each other. Yeah. Some people want to, to show how fast I can do this thing with God, how fast I can build, how fast I can, I can oh. mem- memorize scripture and I can take the, the ushering team to the next level or we can go and do this ministry uh, or outside and we're going to get souls. We're going we're gonna to disciple them and, 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 we, are, and we, we, we forget that we are limited people and if we keep burning walking standing working yet we are asleep the oil will burn out and we'll have nothing to show when god calls us to account oil is limited this is why you can't sleep because yes you may be walking you may be pushing you may be serving but if you are asleep and unaware that the way you are doing your life, you're not going to last. Sure. You're not going to last. 
then you will find yourself um, falling the same way Eutychus did. And thirdly, lastly, one of the third reason why you can't afford to sleep is because comfort causes falls. Comfort causes falls. Comfort causes falls. We see Acts chapter 20 verse 9. It says, seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. Now we all know that when you're uncomfortable, you can't sleep. <laughs> when you're uncomfortable, uh, you'll be in the bed, you'll turn, you'll so toss, toss you'll get up, you'll open this, you'll put that, you'll drink water. Because you are uncomfortable, you can't sleep. I want to say to you, comfort causes falls. I, I want to ask if there's anyone who's <laughs> like me that when you are in bed and it's hot, you take out one leg. <laughs> <laughs> one leg must come out just to just balance, balance the, 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 temperature. the temperature so that uh, you, you're going to sleep well now. You're going to sleep. That, that leg must come out so that, uh, and then you say, ah, now yeah. the rest of the body can, but my, my leg must as be long out. As, yeah. Uh, so so I'm, I'm comfortable now. We see the Bible says this. The Bible says that the, the room they were in was full of lamps. Lamps are hot. Lamps make you sweat. When, when, when even like two, three lamps in a room, you can sweat. The Bible says they were many. They were many. Everybody brought their lamp. So it means as Paul is preaching, people are hot. People are sweating. <laughs> people are saying, "Amen, and amen." Then he's extending. He's extending it. <laughs> amen. Eutychus says, "I. Uh, uh, wait, what is the most comfortable seat in the room?" He says, "The window. I'm gonna sit in the window." Where I can get some air and I can get some of the heat. Ah, like like hey! oh, 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 already, already, if you're hearing me, you're hearing me. He's sitting in the most comfortable seat saying, let me try to hear from God in my comfort. comfort. Ay, ay. Let me try to receive from God in my comfort. Oh. Let me try and be convicted in my comfort. But the Bible says... In the most comfortable seat in the room, he was sinking into a deep sleep. Aye, guys. Comfort is the first step. Comfort is the first step. I was saying the enemy, we often think the enemy is going to come with a spear. The enemy is going to come with a knife. The enemy is going to come with yep. all types of things to try yep. and attack yep. us. Yep. I want you to know, guys, hear me well. Yeah. The enemy also comes with a pillow. As a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> the, Let's go. The sir. enemy also comes with a pillow. Sure. The enemy also comes softly. Yo, man. And says, You've been going through a lot. Oh, God help us. The enemy also says that life is hard. Life is hard. You don't have to, they, they, they must understand you. They must understand that, that, that you can't keep pushing. The enemy comes and says that it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. They are asking too much of you. Yo. And know. says, be comfortable. Be comfortable. Seek comfort. comfort. There's even this thing that we are seeking after as Christians where we say we want soft life. We want it to be, we want it to be, I was saying on Sunday, we want it to be soft. We want it to be Soft. Soft. Yeah, it's not soft. Not soft. We want it soft to, is hard. No, no, soft, soft is uh, it, it must be soft. soft. <laughs> we want it to be comfortable, not knowing that comfort causes falls. Eutychus was comfortable. He was in the right place. He was at the, with the right people, sure. hearing the right preaching, with the right atmosphere. But because he wanted to be comfortable, he fell. God have mercy. He fell out of the presence. He fell out of the teaching. He fell out of the fellowship sure. and he lost life. Come Why? On, he was comfortable. He so wanted good. some of the air and some of the heat, some of the world, some of the kingdom, some of what the world is talking about, some of the flesh, some of the spirit. I just wanted, he just wanted a comfortable space, but found that he was gone and died. Proverbs with the last 10 minutes. You don't preach it like that on Sunday, though. 
What do you mean? You didn't say like that on Sunday. It hurts today. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no. The spirit, is, like the spirit is downloading some more. The spirit is. <laughs> You don't feel like a gas. Ah, no, 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 no. You wanted we, some flesh. You wanted some of the flesh and, and some of the some, spirit. Ah. Wanted some of the world and some of the kingdom. Ah, God have mercy on us. Wanted to be comfortable. You see, I'll even say this to to many times. Many times, people, whether it is within the church, but it's outside of the church, how God calls us to either to carry ourselves or how God calls us to serve Him. Many times, people say they don't want to do something because it's uncomfortable. Mm. It makes me uncomfortable. Mm. But I'm here to to say to everyone, sometimes discomfort is exactly what you need. Yeah. And and even I would say even as a pastor myself, it is one of the things that as as pastors even as church leaders, we have to be very careful about because sometimes we we set up atmospheres to be as comfortable as possible we, we we try to to set an atmosphere that a hey, the car park hey, the whoo it must it must it must mm. the service must whew, must feel good must feel good must feel good must feel good and and then the the flock struggles in discomfort because all that has been sold is comfort be comfortable then when the the, the same man of god stands up and says let's do this thing we struggle. Why does the church say, ah, it's uncomfortable? Mm. And that's just something that I say to myself and anyone who serves in any type of leadership position. We must understand that sometimes we, we, can, we must pull back comfort from those we are leading. Sometimes we must pull it back because we are allowing them to sleep. Sometimes we must pull it away and say, no, we're not going to make our leaders comfortable. We're not going to make our team comfortable. We're not going to make the youth comfortable. No, if some of them have to leave, then maybe they will have to leave. And I think sometimes that is a, a, what's kept us. a aim to make us bigger, to make the, 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 the gatherings bigger yeah. um, or, or to, to, to not let anyone leave. But sometimes we have to give people the raw truth, which is discomfort is sometimes something God uses. Sure. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 31. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 31. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 31. It says, I went past the field of a sluggard. A sluggard is someone who's lazy. And someone who's lazy is just someone who loves comfort. Simple as that. If you are lazy, it means you like to be comfortable. The reason you don't go to gym is because you like to be comfortable. The reason you don't, you don't, um, you don't finish your diet is because you like to be comfortable. There's a thing called comfort food. You know that thing. Oh my God. The, 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 the reason why you can't start the business, you want to be comfortable. It's laziness. It's just liking comfort. So the Bible says this on the first day of the week, uh, uh, sorry, wrong verse. Proverbs 24, verse 30 to 34. It says, I went past the field of a sluggard, one who enjoys comfort. I passed the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. Sure. The ground was covered with weeds. And the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and I learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come to you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. You see, comfort. Sometimes we are comfort. We are sleeping in our comfort, unaware that they are thorns are beginning to grow. Sure. We are comfortable and we are sleeping, unaware that they are weeds that are beginning to show themselves. That walls that are meant to bring protection are now ruined because we want to be comfortable. Missing the fact that God is calling us to be awake. You see, to hate the comfort. The sluggard loved the comfort and allowed things to happen. Why? Because dealing with weeds will make you uncomfortable. Absolutely. Dealing with the weeds of the heart. Dealing with the broken walls of your mind and the broken walls of your conviction where there used to be conviction. Now, why is the conviction now? It's, it's, it's up and you used to be on a fire. Now, it seems like you, you're willing to, to let certain things slide. You become comfortable. Weeds are growing. Sure. Things in the family are beginning to show up when you are supposed to be standing up. 
in prayer. Things are happening in your friend groups. Uh, 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 disagreements that, that used to no, lo- no longer, or th- that never had, were a thing, rather I should say. Mm-hmm. Things that, that didn't have impact are now bringing great impact because of a love of comfort. Yeah. See, three things, three reasons why you can't sleep. Night is coming. Number two, oil is limited. You can't sleep because you'll be unaware of what you're losing. Number three, is because comfort causes falls. Many people who would say that they have fallen was because they started with comfort. Sure. I say one more time to you. Maybe you need to start asking God to make you more uncomfortable. Maybe you need to start asking God, make me uncomfortable again. Maybe there's something already God, you know, whether it's in scripture, it's something that you don't need to be taught again. Maybe it's evangelism, telling someone about Jesus makes you uncomfortable. May, that's the thing that you need to wake you up. You, God gives us these, these works of discomfort to wake us up. There's no one person. I'm just speaking about evangelism. Going to tell people about Jesus. There's something that when they come and go back home, something happens to their prayer lives. Something happens to their convictions. Because the discomforting thing that God tells you to do are things given to you to wake you up God gives us a solution to this and this is what I bring to all of us God brings a remedy to it I th- thanks be to God scripture does not just reveal the problem but also gives us the solution yeah. Matthew 26 verse 40 to 41 Jesus says then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping night was coming He returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Their oil needed to be filled. He returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. They were comfortable enough. They found a comfortable spot in in the, the midst of a garden outside. They found a comfortable spot. He comes and finds them sleeping. He says, could you men not watch with me for an hour? He, he asked Peter. Then he says this, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus gives us this remedy and says... Watch and pray so you will not fall. Eutychus, where you are sitting in your place of comfort, watch and pray so you will not fall. Temptations are different. Some temptations are you're you're tempted to not forgive. You're tempted to not pray. You're tempted to not serve. Temptations come in various shapes and forms. And we are falling in different ways. Some fall publicly. Some are falling in the mind. Some are falling in the in the emotions some are falling in the in the imaginations but jesus says watch and pray so you will not fall listen the situations around you can fall but you don't have to jesus knew that his ministry what looked like the 12 disciples will look like it's falling that all of the miracles and the the wonderful movements that were happening it's gonna fall that all of these things are gonna change but peter you don't have To fall as long as you watch and pray. Listen, the family can go through crisis. The finances can go through crisis. Health can go through crisis. But Jesus gives a remedy to the church. To Peter, who the Bible once more says what? The church would be built upon him. The church cannot afford for him to fall. So Jesus says, watch and a prayer that there are generations depending on you not falling to that that temptation peter there are generations there are kids there are families there are people cities there are there are countries there are people who need god through you and sometimes we are looking at us on this live and we look at the pastor jays we look at the rory songs we look at your pastor but it is you church that needs to not fall there are people who are counting on you to stand when everything else falls sure. you, you see we we read scripture and us today we were depending on the apostles not falling when everything disappeared we were we, we our lives were dependent to say you cannot fall let it all fall around you but you should not 
fall watch and pray so you do not fall oh. into temptation sometimes what you're doing is you are watching too much but you're not praying you are so aware you are so aware of what you are feeling. You are so aware yeah. of what's going on in your family. You are so aware. And even the enemy will bring and say, look, look, look at what's happening. Look at what's happening in the finances. You are watching, but you're not praying. And on the other side, there are some who are praying your prayer, but you have not come down to earth to see the people, to, to, to see yeah. humans. To, to, to talk and to connect to people. Don't just pray in tongues. Stop and watch. Watch what's going on. Watch what people are sure. going through. Watch the situations, sure. the struggles. And this is what will help you to not fall. Watch and pray. And this is what I leave you with today. The spirit is willing. And thanks be to God that on the inside of every believer, the spirit is crying out and saying, I'm willing to stand. Sure. Oh, isn't that good news? That's good news right that the spirit on the inside of you is willing to stand. The spirit on the inside of you can see every situation you face and say that I'm willing Hallelujah. to stand. But the flesh is the one that is weak. Sure. And today I present to you what Jesus presented to Peter. And that is to watch and pray. Your place of prayer cannot suffer. Yeah. The place of prayer, but not just the place of prayer, the place of observation. Yeah. I think sometimes what we do is we get into prayer and we want to forget what we've seen. But God says, what do you saw? Bring it to the place of prayer. Bring it in. Yeah. Don't say, God, you're going to, God, move what is happening in so your it's life? Wishful thinking. It's not wishful Oof. thinking. It says, oh, God wants a prayer that has had open eyes. Hey. God wants to hear the petitions that have been considered, that have been seen, that have been viewed. Now, the thing that we have that scripture has given us is we do not walk by our sight, but by faith. Mm. So, so, so what we see by faith, we bring before God in prayer. To say, God, I see it, but I, I will not be governed by, by it. it yeah. I see it. It's not the final thing. It's not the final word, and I will bring it to you. Every detail of what I've seen, God, I'll bring it to you. And the Bible says, if you watch and you pray, if you watch and you pray, if you watch and you pray, you will not fall. I want to pray for someone today. Huh? I want to pray for people today that, you know, many times we... we we are, we are sleepwalking at times. And you can find yourself, you are sleepwalking. That, that you are asleep. You are asleep. You are asleep. It's, it's, yes, you love God, but, sure. but there's a sense of sleep. There's, a thing, there's many things you are unaware of. You've become, you've become dull. You see, and that's the scary thing with, with sleepwalking is you, you will know the road to walk. You're not going to bump into anything. You're going to walk. You're going to go to the fridge. You can even open it. You will ah. know what to do, but you are asleep. Now, I say this, uh, the medical term says it's self-diagnosed, but I would even say we're going to pray and say, Holy Spirit, if I'm not seeing it, reveal it to me. Diagnose it. The, much, the, the, the same way we go to a doctor for our physical ailments, let us go to the Holy Spirit. For our spiritual issues. Yeah. Let us go to the Holy Spirit and say, if I'm not seeing, yes, Lord. assess me. Yes, Lord. Uh, 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 David writes, search my heart. Oh, yeah. Meaning that there are at times things that I may not see. Yeah. But search me. Am I sleeping, God? And if not, the same prayer you prayed in the beginning. Revive me. Wake yeah, me up. Too. Wake me up. Wake me up. So I want us to say this prayer together today. To say, Lord, wake me up. If I've been comfortable, Lord, wake me up. Sure. Wake me up. Wake me up. May I not need things around me, but bring me to a place where I'm, where I'm switched on, I'm aware, and I will not fall to the temptations that come my way. Let me pray for you today. Father, I come to you today. I thank you in the name of Jesus for everyone who is tuned to this life. Father, we, we can find ourselves in a place where our, our Christianity, our walk with you has come to a place where it is just my God, religious.
where we know the time to pray. We know the time for the service. We know how to open the scripture, but it is not alive to us and we are not alive to you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I lift up everyone, my God, who is tuned to this message, whether they are parents, whether they are children, whether they are male, whether they are female, I lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, I pray that in every household that you would do a work of revival. I pray in the name of Jesus that every life, my God, that is tuned in, whether via, via cell phone, whether they are on a laptop, wherever they are, my God, show them, my God, that they are no longer alive. They have come to a place where they are sleeping, yet they are in the right place. They have the right people around them, but they are unaware that there has come this sleep that is bringing them to a place where there is no longer a life, there is no longer passion, there is no longer desire, and in the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, do what only you can. May they watch and pray. May they watch their eyes, my God, and pray. May they watch their words and may they pray. May they watch how they are doing emotionally and internally and pray. May they look at every circumstance that they are facing and pray. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for the temptations that each person is facing. The temptations of the flesh. The temptations of the eyes. The temptations that the world brings to them. May they stand as they pray. May they stand as things are ripped away from them. Lord, I lift up someone today that has experienced extreme loss. I lift up someone today who something in their life has been taken away from them, that they feel that they are standing in the night time. Spirit of God, I pray that you would give them this key, which is to watch and pray. They do not have to fall. I pray, my God, for those who are already falling. My God, restore Restore their soul, restore their strength, restore their passion that they are able, my God, to stand in this season. Lord, I lift up those who feel like they are in a season that is being extended. Those who are in a season who feel like it is taking longer than they expected. My God, may they see the wealth and the worth of this season, the value and the gold in this season that is preparing them for the next in Jesus' name. Lord God. We lift up our minds. We lift up our spirits. We lift up our walks with you. May we not be sleepwalking, but may we walk as those who are awake. May we walk as those with open eyes, God. May we walk with those, my God, who are sensitive to the Spirit with what you are saying and with what you are doing. Holy Spirit, I lift up every life. Father, we are grateful, my God, that no one is tuned in by mistake. I pray, my Lord, that you would draw them into the place of prayer. I pray, my God, that they would be convicted to rise up and to pray. And I pray, my God, may their prayers not be done with closed eyes, but with open open eyes. I pray, my God, may they view everything happening around them with open eyes and pray watching, my God. And I pray in Jesus' name that there would be a grace to stand through every temptation. Father, I pray, my God, that this willing spirit would carry us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would be stirred in us, convict us, convict us, convict us. We love you, Lord. We we praise you. And once more, we say, may our walks not be counted among those who are sleepwalking. But I pray, my Lord, instead of being like Eutychus, my God, may we we choose to be awake and receive from you with what you're telling us to do today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we all say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Yo, she don't even know what to say. Mm. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for Pastor Jay. We thank you for this word that you put in his mouth, Lord God. We pray that we receive it with our whole hearts. Once again, Lord God, we declare that we're fertile soil that can receive that which you have for us. Mm. Mudumaka, I pray that this word doesn't go back to your void, Mudumaka. Mm. That Holy Spirit, you know who. Who knows how to teach us, guide us, that this word will 
ring rema in our yes. spirits in yes. the yes. mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Mudimaka, as we go to sleep, as we rest, we pray that the switching off of this life doesn't mean the switching off of the word, doesn't mean mm. the switching off of your presence, mm. doesn't mean the switching off of our desire for you, even yes. when the multitudes are gone, mm. Father, that our hearts still be yearning for you yes. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that everybody just rest peacefully tonight. And as we get ourselves ready to pray in the morning, Lord God, that we will show up eager Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ, we pray. Bless Pastor Jay for us. Bless his ministry. Bless the work of his hands. Father, we pray for speed for him. Continue to use him in the mighty way that you have. Um, give him utterance, Lord God. Give him wisdom even in this season Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We count him as a blessing in our lives, Lord God, and we thank you for him. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bless all those, Lord God, who are tuned in, even those who will watch later. Yes. We declare, Lord God, that this word will be remembered to them as it is for us, even in this moment live. That as they catch up, Lord God, that you continue to speak and reveal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We honor you and we thank you. Yes. We don't take it lightly. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. We're back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock for prayer. Please make sure you're there. Bring a friend. That's all I got to say. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Woo! Pastor!